Hey guys, uh, welcome back uh, to my channel here. Uh, you know, if you guys have been following my channel and stuff, you guys know I've got the, off, the new off-grid house I'm building for myself here. I've got a whole bunch of different projects going on uh, regarding off-grid stuff and solar and wind and all that good stuff, right? So, um, really quick video today. Um, first, I had a question about the solenoid in here right the one that diverts the power for my divert load i mean you can you can wire it up a bunch of different ways you can wire it up where it where it triggers on and it diverts power to a second battery bank or to some type of dump load that you want it to go to or you can wire it up to where it basically just cuts the power in half just i mean just cuts the line basically so once the voltage gets to a high enough point um the solenoid pops and then it stops the connection so now it's not charging anymore and then when the voltage drops below that that threshold or that number then it'll re-engage and allow charging to keep happening and so the question was does it get hot does it get really hot um and i'll tell you guys something okay look when you guys build your guys own system like this you know it's a complete diy you know thing here right so you're building your own box you're building your own control panel and if you buy anything like even an inverter right if you buy an inverter or you go buy a charge controller or whatever it is you're going to buy they automatically put fans in there because they know components will get hot or warm so they put fans in there to keep the temperature down so that way not only does it get dangerously hot and catch fire but it keeps everything cool keep everything operating within the operating specs of what it should be operating in right um, and then that way you don't have to worry about um, other issues so the question was was does it get hot and mine does definitely get warm it doesn't get like burning burning hot where i can't touch it you know but it gets it gets hot it gets you know warmish hot like it's hard to explain like i can hold it but then again too my threshold for pain or touching something like that may be higher than some people's and maybe lower than some people's right so somebody was leaving a comment saying, I, he can't even touch it because it's so freaking hot, right? So, I mean, when you build your own box like this or whatever you're building, make sure you put a fan in it. That's all you have to do. Put a cheap 12-volt fan, and you can put the 12-volt fan connected to the relay on the relay side because this is 12 volt, 12 volts. So you can get 12 volt, small little computer fan or whatever it is. You can mount it into the box as long as you got some vents, right? And you can connect the wires to the exact same terminals. And then that way when the dump load is triggered on, your fan turns on automatically. Then when the dump load is triggered off, then it turns off. Right? So that can be the automatic on and off. So it's not like you have to come out here and manually turn on the, the fan. So that's one way you can do that to keep your components cool. The other thing is, is that if you guys looked at some of my earlier videos, I have had um, two bridge rectifiers here. I just removed one right here. I'll show you. So here's one of the bridge rectifiers, right? There's two. I had two big fans, and mine's connected to a thermostat, controlled thermostat that I set up, that once it gets to a certain temperature, the fan will turn on to cool these bridge rectifiers down. Then once it hits that temperature of being cool, it turns off and it goes back and forth all day long, depending on how hot these things get, right? Um, the fans are not on there now because I've been doing some different experimenting and trying different things with my whole system. I got so much stuff going on, guys. So that's the easiest way to control the heat and temperature is by cooling it down, keeping a breeze on it, you know what I mean, keeping a fan on it or whatever it may be. That'll help you out. So what the reason why I removed this bridge rectifier is for one, I'm not using it currently. I have that one down there I'm using, right? Um, and um, what happened is uh, we had some high winds, not this last weekend, but the weekend before. And um, my brother's bridge rectifier melted down because what happens with these ones here is you can buy bridge rectifiers in different forms, I guess you could say, okay? But they basically do the exact same thing but different forms of how they come and how they look. So this one's got epoxy in it, okay? And they're okay, but the problem is is that they're not they're not made to have prolonged extreme heat on them because what happens is over time this epoxy becomes I mean it's solid right now, right? But it'll actually become um, gooey. It'll start breaking down on you, right? And it gets real hot and it becomes where it's like just a puddle. And it start, you know, pouring out on you, right? And so, like, I've had that happen before already. And that's why I decided to put fans on mine. But I also decided to go and upgrade. And I bought the other ones that don't have no epoxy anymore. So you can buy them the ones that have no epoxy. They're a little bit more expensive. But it's worth it, right? Because then you don't have to ever worry about the epoxy, um, you know, going bad on you 
right? And then the internal um, terminals shorting out on you, right? And that's why they have heat sinks on this whole thing. It's a heat sink, right? To help spread that heat out so it doesn't, you know, mess up the epoxy. But when you're pumping a lot of amps and power through these things, you know, for hours or if not days on end, um, this epoxy will fail at some point. And so my brother's wind turbine, he has a PMA wind turbine. If you guys look back at some of my earlier videos, um, I have a video of him, me basically tearing his old one apart and rebuilding it and putting it back together. And it's been working okay f ever since we rebuilt it. But since we had that last high winds, um, he does have a very small 12 volt fan. And I told him it was too small, but you know, it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I gave it to him for free anyway. You know what I mean? Cause I had some extra fans and I told him you might want to upgrade your fan to a bigger fan, but he never did. And now it's come back to bite him because what has happened is the, um, a couple weeks ago, a couple weekends ago, the winds got so high um, that the amperage and the power coming from his wind turbine ended up melting down his bridge rectifier on his, I don't know if it was on his, I think it was on his negative terminal. You can actually see it all bubbled up and just fried. It's junk. So what I'm going to do today, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and um, give him this one. I'll give this one to him um, since I'm not using it. And I have some new ones. I have some brand new ones in the van over there that are the metal ones that don't have the epoxy, which is for the new home. Okay. But um, I'm going to go ahead and go down to his house, drop this off to him. And maybe I can take a shot, uh, a, vi a video or a, a picture of what his one, how his ones failed. If you guys look back at my other videos, you guys will see how mine fell and how it got melted and the epoxy just basically just rolls up and it was just bad news, right? So um, I'm going to go down there, give him this, take some footage of his other one, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, I just want you guys to be aware of the ones you guys are buying. If you guys are wa running wild three-phase AC, you know, you guys need a bridge rectifier. And if you guys are going to buy a bridge rectifier, make sure you be aware. If you're going to use these, make sure you put a big enough fan on them that is temperature controlled so it can keep these things cool. You know, if you, if you keep them cool, you get more power going into your battery bank and you don't have to worry about these things failing on you. Either that or go buy the other ones that are just all steel metal. I mean, well, I don't think they're steel, but they're, um, I think, yeah, I think they are metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're all metal. They don't have no epoxy in them. And that would be the best way to go because then you don't have to worry about the metal melting. I mean, the epoxy because there's no epoxy in the other one. But you can also still keep a fan on the other one because the more the more hot something gets, the more heat transfer that's being transferred out is less power going into your batteries and into your, you know, your off-grid home. So the idea is to keep everything nice and cool. So my advice to brother man that was asking a bunch of questions, I, I, I messaged him back through the comments. But um, I just basically said put a cheap 12 volt fan on it. But make sure your 12 volt fan is big enough to su supply enough air to keep that um, solenoid cool. Then you won't have no problems at all. No problems. A super simple fix, you know, because we're building our own boxes. We're not pre buying a built um, pre built box. You know what I mean? So like for me, you know, you have to do your research. Make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you're keeping things cool and all that kind of stuff. You know. And, you know, it's just like these things here. You know, you want to make sure you put a fan on them, keep them cool, and all of that stuff. So, anyway, I'll give you guys another shot here uh, when we get down there. Alright, guys. So, um, I went ahead and uh, went down to my brother's house and gave him um, one of my um, extra um, bridge rectifiers. And, um... We ended up stopping the wind turbine so it's not spinning and making all our connections. And uh, once we faced the wind turbine back into the wind, uh, it took like not even like two minutes. The wind, the wind gust came by and started started up again and producing power. So um, he's back up and running as far as his um, PMA is concerned, his um, wind turbine. But um, I want to show you guys what these bridge rectifiers, how they end up failing. They're, they'll fail a couple different ways. Uh, so... Here is the bridge rectifier that um, got burnt up on his. So let me try to make sure I can focus this and you guys can see what I'm talking about. So you guys can see how that one got completely melted. You guys see right here? It got all melted and now it's like ash in here so I got paint on my fingers from um doing some um, painting on my home I started um, painting the other grooves on the other side of the house right guys and um I ended up finishing finishing the whole bottom all the way this way and that way now I just gotta do the top but then 
uh, the bad weather is coming back in, so I decided to put all my painting stuff away. But, um, yeah, these, um, there we go, focus. Um, these bridge rectifiers, they have, like, this epoxy stuff in here. And when, and this one can handle 100 amps, right? But um, when you're talking about continuous power, you know, hours on in, if not days. Like, sometimes out here, these things will not stop for a day or weeks even. You know what I mean? We just have win, 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 win. And, um... They're not really, these ones right here at least, are not really made to have continuous amperage on them. They can handle for hours and maybe a day or two, but once you start talking about a week or more of the continuous heat, um, and over time too, it doesn't have to be like a whole month or whatever, or a whole week of just running continuous. Over time, this even gets even, um, this epoxy in here because of the heat, um, starts breaking down. And then over time, it just starts getting worse and worse and worse. Um, I've had a couple where mine has all this has completely turned into goo and it was gooing out like because I have my mouth like this And it'll just start you know gooing out You know because this gets all soft in here after it gets hot and long enough um, The other one I had that failed was all the edges you see how like this epoxy let me focus right here Yeah, so you see how it's got this epoxy crap um, the whole edge on one of mine the inside basically came, it separated itself from the heat sink and became, um, like loose, you know, and like there was a nice edge all the way around it that you could see that, um, that where it's, um, been lifting away from the heat sink. Um, on this case, this is my brother's one on the, I believe that's the negative terminal. Yeah, the, yeah, that's the negative terminal on his, um, the negative terminal ended up failing. Um, the thing is, is that since this is my brother's, I don't know exactly, I, I know how he had it hooked up, but I don't know, um, if his connection here was loose, because sometimes if your connections are loose anywhere, um, it's not making a very good contact, and then what ends up happening is, um, it's almost like it's, it's not shorting, but it's almost something like shorting where it's not making a good contact, and then it starts to build up heat, you know, and then it'll travel down the pole. Um, but in this case, it's going backwards, right? Because three phase comes in here, goes through here, and it comes out to here to the to your um, battery or to your breakers or whatever or fuses. So on his one, his negative failed, and you guys can see how this one um completely just just got destroyed. So um, yeah, that's what they look like when they fell. Um, they fell a couple different ways. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, the other new ones, the new bridge rectifiers I bought that are in my, um, brick van out there, um, for this new house here, um, it's actually all metal. It's like the same stuff here as the heat sink, but all the way around, there's no epoxy in the middle anymore. Uh, so those are going to be the, the new ones that we go with for now on. But I had some extra ones of these. I always buy extra of mostly everything. So, um, it, you know, I could just give one to my brother and he's up and running again. And I told him, you know, that it'll last for, a, you know, a year or two years or whatever it is before they start to fail. And so I said, hey, you know, maybe next time it fails, you know, maybe pre-buy one for yourself. The newer style, so that way um, you don't have to worry about the epoxy melting down on you. And so he said he'd think about it and look into it. Um, you guys can see my other bridge rectifier here. Oh, right there. Um, that one is newer than the one I gave my brother, um, but it still works, you know what I mean? So, right now I only have one bridge rectifier hooked up. Um, here's the other wind turbine wires right here. They're not touching anything. Um, the wild three phase, and that was for the pulley um, turbine, wind turbine, but um, since I'm not using... Um, the pulley wind turbine right now. I just got too much projects going on um, I just said I could you know let him you know either use it or have that extra bridge rectifier I had I think I actually have like another one more of these someplace besides the new ones I bought for the new house So yeah, anyway guys just wanted to give you guys an update on his uh, wind turbine um, Failing and it wasn't because the wind turbine failed. It was because the bridge rectifier failed as soon as we put the new bridge rectifier on, guys, and the wind came and started the wind turbine back up, he started producing power again. So, um, you know, that's a lot of juice and a lot of continuous amperage coming down that line, um, coming and hitting this bridge rectifier. And so, you know, just something to be aware of, guys, and take a look at and make sure you check your equipment and stuff. Um, the other thing that was, he actually had a very small little fan on here to try to keep it cool. But the fan was so small that it wasn't, I mean, it was doing like almost barely nothing, right? 
So, like I told him, I told him, hey, just, just invest in buying a bigger fan. They're not expensive. You know, you can buy those 12 volt fans, all the square ones, all day long. You know what I mean? Like even from an old computer or whatever. Um, so I told him to go buy one of those, mount it to the side of it or to the back of it or whatever. And um, basically, um, what do you call it? Um, just have that as uh, something to cool it down because these things will get hot. I mean, some, sometimes some of the ones I've I've had, the ones that before that's failed. Oh man, when we've had some crazy winds, I mean, <laughs> this freaking thing gets red hot, guys. I mean, all the, the not these terminals up here, but these terminals here. Holy crap, guys! They they'll get red freaking hot. I mean, the the whole thing will get so hot that there's just no way you can touch it. You know, it just burns the hell out of you because there's a lot of juice coming down the line. You know, so um. Yeah, at least he's back up and running. His wind turbine's good. Uh, so now the next one I got to work on is my father's. My father's wind turbine is not a wild... Th well, it's technically wild three-phase AC, but his bridge rectifier is mounted up into the the wind turbine, right? So, um, and it doesn't... The bridge rectifier doesn't look like this. It looks a little bit different That so that way it can fit into the PMA casing, right? The um, AC Delco case. So, um... Yeah, his one's going to be a lot more pain in the ass to um, work on because we have to drop down the whole wind turbine, take off the blades, dismount everything, take apart the actual PMA, pull out the magnets, and then go in the back and disconnect the three wires that are connected to his bridge rectifier, and then replace it, put it all back together, stand the wind turbine back up, and then turn it back on. So that's a lot more work and a lot more uh, stuff to do, right? So that's the next project, I guess you could say, helping him out, trying to get him, get him back up and running um I try, i'm trying to convince him to hook it up like how we have ours hooked up so that way if it fails you know it's right here you can keep an eye on it not only that it's super easy to change right here's all the wires right here just unplug them all unscrew them and move them out and plug the next one in you don't have to drop your wind turbine down for it so but his one has only got those two wires coming down because since his wild three phase is being converted at the top when it comes down the pole he's only got two wires he's got a negative and positive basically that's it with these you have to have three wires coming down and then it gets converted you know over here at like say the um your power station or your power board or whatever wherever you got your equipment i like it this way it's just a lot easier to work on guys like i mean i've gone through these bridge rectifiers you know here and there so i i know what it's all about when they go down you know and i'm so glad i decided to put it this way instead of having the bridge rectifier up in the wind turbine because i mean that's just a bunch of headaches Plus two, I mean, if you have the bridge rectifier mounted up into the P the PMA up on the wind turbine, um, that negative and positive wire that's coming down the pole has to be very thick, because you know what I mean. That's it's being converted up there, and that's DC already. That's DC current coming down down that line. So you gotta have very thick cables. So they cost more money to run that way as well. When it's just easier to run the wild three phase AC and then convert it down to um, DC at your um, equipment room or whatever. So. Anyway, guys, just wanted to show you guys the burnt out, um, yeah, bridge rectifier, kind of how they, how they start burning out and what they look like and all that. I didn't save my other ones, the other ones that I, I burnt out. I mean, well, that failed. I didn't burn them out, they just failed. Um, I threw them away because there's, there's no sense of keeping them, you know, if they're going to be like this, you know. But, uh, that's what I told them. I told them, hey, you know, I'm going to take this so I can videotape it so that way I can show people kind of what they look like when they fail. So that's what it is, guys. So if you just put a nice big fan on it, and then here's another thing that like I told my brother. So like inside of my control box here, guys, I have that um, thermostat. So, so you see I have a probe right here. Let me pull it out. So I have a probe that I stick into the fin here. And there's a uh, controller in here that I can control the temperature with. So basically when the I can set the set points. So once it gets so hot, it'll the, the relay will open and turn on a fan to cool mine down. Then once it hits a... Uh, cool point whatever that that set point I set um, It'll turn back off and then when it gets hot again It goes back and forth back and forth to turn that fan on and off So I mean that's an option he can do as well um, But since I've been tinkering around with my stuff um, I took off my my um, fans for now because um, I've been you know, I'm always tinkering around with something so um, I'll probably put the fan back on probably next week or whatever, but um, yeah, I'm gonna show, let me show you guys what those um things I, I forget forget the name guys you guys see those things with the lights on right here I got two of them one on that side and one on this side and basically it's in Celsius So you just got to do the conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit and um, you should be good to go so you can set it up 
and then basically it has a negative and positive that goes into it a negative and positive comes out of it and that negative and positive will come down and connect to your um fan so that way that's temperature controlled so that way you're not coming out here and hitting a switch on and off you know what i mean you can just have that do it automatically and then you don't have to worry that's why my brother was asking me he's like well how the hell are you like if you're not home then how is how's your fan turning on and i said oh i got those controllers in my um control box and he was like what he's like what's the name of them and i'm like damn man i bought them so long ago i can't even remember what the name were, was you know what i mean i told him but i can look into it for him and see um help him out so that way he doesn't have to because he's got a toggle switch on his to turn his fan on and off which is a headache right because if you're not home and that thing is screaming away and fucking you know getting super hot um you can melt it you know if you don't have um you if you're not keeping it cool enough so if you got like an automated system like i have or you know my makeshift uh diy system um you know you're, you're making it more automated so you don't have to really worry too much um, but then again, too, you always want to double check all your components because components are, um, famous for failing. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's it, guys. Just want to give you guys a quick update. Um, he's back up and running. Uh, maybe when I take apart my father's one and, um, rebuild it and put his new bridge rectifier in it, maybe I'll document that for you guys, uh, if you guys are interested. And then, um, you know, at least then you guys can see the difference between having it like this and having the one inside of the PMA. So, anyway guys, hope you guys are having a great day, and um, I hope the weather clears up for me so that way I can get back on painting the house, because um, I did all the lines on the bottom and on the back side that goes all the way down the other side of the house. So now I gotta do all the lines up here, then take the corner and go around and do all those lines. And then once all those lines is done, then it's all a matter of just rolling the whole wall and finish up pa painting our fascia all the way around, and then basically it's primered in. Then I can caulk everything and then get ready to actually put the final color paint on here, so... Anyway guys, see you guys in the next video.